Good morning, my name is Mel Colley from MelColley.com and I just wanted to share with you um, a technique that I use on clients who come to me who have bad backs, um, who have bad knees or painful ankles, plantar fascia, stuff like that. So I do um, a kinetic chain assessment on them. Um, we do a posture assessment, a standing assessment against the plumb line, but I also use um, movement techniques as well. So seeing how they lunge, how they squat, um, how they move their shoulders, how they have fine stability in their hips, just to find um, weaknesses and strengths in their hips and in their back, in their shoulders. So one of the techniques we use is how to do a squat and I use a dowling rod or um, something like um, a broom handle, which everyone's got. So quite easy technique, there's two ways of doing it, it's all depending on how tight people are in their chest, um, people that sit all day, maybe driving, people who use their mobiles a lot, um, people who use their computers a lot or a laptop, tend to be quite rounded in the chest because we tend to have forward head and the weight of the head shifts forward which shifts the shoulder girdle which uh, the chest becomes tight and rounded and the upper body, upper back becomes um, lengthened. Okay, so um, one of the techniques I use is taking the post behind your back, now depending on how tight my client is in their upper, upper body, they might not be able to get the hand in this position. So I'll show you the second technique in a minute. So thinking about the correct curves of the spine, the natural curves of the spine, which is how the spine wants to be, um, the back of the head is touching the post, and the heart line, ladies that's where your bra line is more or less, um, wants to be touching the post and the sacrum and the tailbone area touching the post. So the gaps are where your lower back is and where your neck is, which is where, oh, hello ceiling, which is where you grab hold of the post. Okay. Cornish houses, low ceilings, what can I say? Let's move the post. Okay, so without, use, without moving your three points of attachment off the post, now you're going to squat. Off you go. Sit back into the heels, push back with your glutes, so the tailbone goes back, so the knees aren't going forward over your toes and they're not falling together and they're not falling away from each other. So think about your toes in line with your, uh, about your second and third toe. And once you get back there, making sure you've still got contact, because people tend to drop their head forward, they tend to sink from away from the middle of the post as well using your glutes to drive yourself back up. And again, pushing back, using your glutes, driving yourself back up. So you're looking straight ahead without dropping the head forward. So that's one technique, always watching your knees. It's quite a good indication for me when I'm doing the assessments to see what's weak and what's tight in the thighs, which also contributes to knee pain because it comes off from the hip. Um, to see if the knees fall inwards or if the knees just tend to splay outwards. So you're trying to keep those knees tracked in line with your hip as well. So they're almost like they're on train tracks. Okay, second technique, taking the palms facing forward, holding onto the post, shoulders together and down. So we're opening up the chest, widening the collarbone, sitting back again as we just did, trying to think about the post still being on your back. But almost imagine if you had a personal trainer, that their hands, as they are just behind you, was just behind, just in line with your knee. You're going to sit back and reach down with your glutes, with your tailbone to touch the post. And then drive yourself back up with your glutes. Sitting back, touching the post, driving yourself up. Same technique as before, trying to keep the three lines, three points of contact with the post. As you sit back, touch the post as if someone's hand was there and driving yourself back up. Okay, so you're trying to think about your technique, which muscles you're using, and keeping that nice long line of the spine. Okay, so that's how I do a squat technique on my clients. Um, it's quite interesting to see the different posture types that we get and the different ranges of movement that people have, the lack of mobility in people's ankles, and how that can affect the kinetic chain all the way up to the head. So have a practice and see how you get on. It's a very um, basic technique, but it's um, a functional move. You think how many times you squat during the day. If you've got kids, you're always um, squatting down to pick up toys off the floor. How many times do you go to the loo in a day? You're always squatting down to get onto the loo. Um, how do you get up? Do you use your back to get up or do you use your legs to get back up? Um, 
getting back into a car if the car's quite low, um, even just sitting back down on a chair and how you get back up off the chair. So it's all techniques that during the day, um, obviously it's like a, think of it like your own little personal training program and how you sit and how you move your muscles during the day, how you walk, um, how you push yourself back up into a standing position from sitting in a chair. So we find that people tend to use their backs quite a lot rather than using their legs. Okay, so have a practice and let me know how you get on at mailcolly.com. Take care. Thank you for watching.